This relay reads method is the most widely used variational method to obtain the solutions to the structural problem. And how do we start with this relay reads method? We formulate this potential function. We formulate something called as potential function, which is given by strain, energy, and work potential, right? And rather than starting from the governing governing differential equation of the problem it directly formulates the problem using an expression for potential potential functional potential functional which is nothing but strain energy plus work potential so before actually going into this related method or how this method works let us start or let us understand some this term strain energy and work potential in more details right because this is nothing but this related method starts from potential function and potential function is nothing but it is a combination of strain energies and work potential for a given problem now first let us understand what is strain energy what is strain energy right now if I plot a graph, if I plot a graph of say load P, load P versus U, and we'll try to understand this graph for a simple 1D bar example. We'll, we'll try to understand this graph with respect to this simple 1D bar example. I have this bar here, which is subjected to say load P of cross-sectional area A of material property E and of length L. And then uh, what I'm doing here is I'm applying a gradual load, gradual load in the sense I'm not applying this whole magnitude of P directly at once on this bar, but I'm slowly increasing this magnitude of this load that is from zero magnitude up to the P magnitude. And in that process, this bar will undergo some extension this bar will undergo some extension and let us call this let us call this extension as u let us let us call this extension as u now as i am applying this this load from zero as i am applying this load from zero this it will start extending in this direction in the direction of x and then at the maximum load P, it will have the maximum deflection or maximum deformation as U. So as I'm gradually increasing this load, as I'm gradually increasing this load, as I'm gradually increasing this load, also the this deformation in the bar will increase and finally and finally at the maximum load of P, at maximum load of P, I will have the maximum deformation of u right and now this area under this curve this area under this curve is nothing but is nothing but strain energy this area under this curve is nothing but strain energy now by looking at this graph i can say that strain energy strain energy is this area right the total area this total area this total area would have been p multiplied by u but this is only the half of this area strain energy so this comes to half into p into u half into p into u is the strain energy this is the strain energy right so now what is p for this bar for this one dimensional bar this p is nothing but sigma that is the stress developed stress developed multiplied by this cross sectional area right you might be knowing this as stress is force by area so similarly i get this force applied on this bar as stress times its cross sectional area a also this deformation u can be given as strain times the original length you might be knowing this as stra strain is change in length by original length from here i get this u as epsilon into l and if i substitute this here in the strain energy expression i get strain energy as strain energy as half into sigma into a and then u is nothing but epsilon into l if i just rearrange this term i can write this as half sigma 
epsilon a into l now this a into l this area this area here multiplied by this length multiplied by this length is nothing but the volume of this bar right it is volume of this bar so further i can write this as sigma epsilon into volume is nothing but this is the strain energy expression strain energy expression for this one dimensional linear isotropic bar or any one dimensional li linear isotropic material linear elastic isotropic material fine this is the strain energy expression for linear elastic isotropic material the fact that i got here the straight line of p versus u it itself tells us that it is a linear material and upon elastic materials as those material uh, which upon releasing the load will regain its shape and size those are elastic material isotropic material are the material which has the properties similar properties in all the direction fine so this is such kind of material which is linear elastic isotropic material now if i divide this strain energy by volume if i divide this strain energy further by volume then i get this as half sigma into epsilon and i can i can write this as strain energy by volume as strain energy density strain energy density and strain energy density is given by half into stress into strain fine so this we will be using very frequently this expression will be using very frequently in in deciding the strain energy for different elements such as bar beam and so on but right? so this was all we had to see or discuss about this term strain energy now let us see what is work potential right now let us see what is work potential work potential work potential now work potential work potential is caused due to the external applied forces work potential is caused due to the external applied forces external applied forces this external applied forces do some work do some work on the uh on the system on the system in this case our system was this 1d bar and then this external applied load multiplied by the corresponding displacement corresponding displacement is called as is called as the work done on the system and which will be the negative of work potential for example for example if i have this 1d bar again and if i apply the load here say p and if the corresponding displacement or the displacement in the direction of this applied force is suppose say u then the work potential will be work potential will be minus of work done minus of work done work potential is minus of work done and work done here is p multiplied by the corresponding displacement that is what is corresponding displacement corresponding displacement the displacements displacements which are in the direction in the direction of the applied of the applied forces or along the applied forces right so work potential is negative of work done and that is that is equal to minus p into that is applied force multiplied by the corresponding displacement now why this is minus is because usually the sign convention is the work which is done on the system done on system on system work done on system is taken as negative whereas work done by the system is taken as positive and that is how we get this sign as minus so this is the work potential now this this work potential which is negative of work done here was the only because of this one point force 
which is applied here at this at x equal to l and which gives us the corresponding displacement of u so in this case the work potential was u but as we are aware that the forces forces acting on body forces acting on body can be of three types right the forces acting on body can be of three types which are which are which are known as body forces body forces surface forces surface forces also called as tractions surface forces are also called as traction and then there are point forces and then there are point forces or or concentrated forces concentrated concentrated forces usually these are the three types of forces which acts on the body and then because of this 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 will result in work potential due to body force work potential due to body force this will result in work potential due to surface forces and this will result in work potential due to due to point force so here here this work potential was because of the point force or the point load right so let us see what will be the what will be the work potential due to the body forces now body forces are something body forces this body forces body forces are the forces which acts on which acts on entire body body forces are the forces which acts on entire body for example if i have a general body here which is which is which is constrained at this place any general three dimensional body which is constrained at this place and then suppose say if this body is subjected to gravitational force fine if this body is subject to gravitational subjected to gravitational force or it is subjected to say centrifugal force centrifugal force or it is subjected to say electro magnetic force so this forces this forces acts on this entire body and not on the surface or at some place but it this kind of forces acts on the entire body and that is why these forces are called as the body forces the forces which acts on the entire body are called as body forces the unit is always in terms of forces per unit volume since it acts on the entire body the unit is forces the unit of body forces is force per unit volume force per unit volume and suppose say the component of this body forces is fx is fx fy fz in this three directions in this three direction that is x in x y and z direction if my components of this body forces is fx fy and fz and then the corresponding displacements and the corresponding displacement in x direction is let us say u in y direction let us say the corresponding displacement is v and in z direction let us say the corresponding displacement is w then the body forces acting in this directions will result in the in in work potential as is, is will result in work potential will result in work potential as minus of this force body force in x direction multiplied by the displacement or the deformation in x direction that is u plus this fy multiplied by v plus fz multiplied by w and this whole is multiplied by this whole is multiplied by the volume dv right force into displacement is nothing but the work done but this work is in only in x direction since body forces acts on the entire body its component fx fy and fz will have to be multiplied by its corresponding displacement u v and w in its respective directions so this force multiplied by this corresponding displacement will give us the work done on the system and this whole term is multiplied by dv because these forces are acting per unit volume so per unit volume so newton per volume newton per meter cube multiplied by this meter cube newton meter per meter cube multiplied by this meter cube will give us newton meter which is the work done which is ne uh, the the negative of work done is the work potential so this is the expression for body force 
fine this is what the work done is on the body force now of course the, this might be the small work done on the small element this work done is on the small element and if i want to find what is the work done on this entire body then i will have to integrate this i will have to integrate this i will have to integrate this and that will be that will be this integration over this entire volume f of x into u plus f of y into v plus f of z into w times dv times dv so this is the expression this is the expression for work potential this is the expression for work potential i can also put this in a in a um vector form or in a matrix form as work potential is is u transpose f dv where u transpose where u transpose is u into v into w these are the corresponding forces in x corresponding displacement in x y and z direction and this force is nothing but fx fy fx fy and fz transpose so this means that this will be multiplied with f u v and w will be multiplied with fx fy fz and finally we will get this as fx into u plus fy into v plus fz into w as this expression which we have got here right so this is about the work potential due to body forces so work potential due to body forces is integral of v fx into u plus fy into v plus fz into w times dv now the second type of force which we have is which we said so the second type of force which we have is the surface force the way body forces x on the entire body the surface forces x on the surface the surface forces x on the on only on the surface fine and then therefore and if the surface happens to be at the boundaries they are also called as tractions all right the way the unit of body force was per unit volume similarly the surface force is the unit of surface force is per per unit area per unit area and since since this x only on the surface since this body acts only on the surface the resultant or the final work potential which we get the final work potential which we get will be multiplied by will be multiplied by the small surface area the small surface area right and this again will have the three components that is tx into u plus ty into v plus tz into w if the forces tx ty and tz the surface forces are usually denoted by t which also stands for traction and if its component in x y and z directions x y and z directions are tx ty and tz for the corresponding displacements of u v and w we get this as our surface force and then if i want the surface force to be calculated for the entire body then this work potential here will be integration of this small work potential which is nothing but integration over the surface area over the surface area times times tx into u plus tx ty into v plus tz into w times ds times ds so this is the work potential because of surface forces and the last and this this ds is multiplied just to take care of this surface force per unit area and the last term and the last term which we have and the last term which we have is is the last term which we have is work potential due to point load or point forces work potential due to point forces and this work potential is directly given as is directly given as point force in x direction multiplied by its corresponding displacement in x direction 
plus point force in y direction multiplied by its corresponding displacement in y direction plus point force in z direction multiplied by its corresponding displacement in z direction fine and then i can again rewrite this as u transpose of p right u transpose of phi, p wherein u transpose is again nothing but this is equal to u v and w and p stands for and p stands for this p stands for fx fy or px py pz transpose which will give us back this expression even here i can write it in this fashion i can say that this work potential this work potential as minus integral of this surface u transpose p right where what will be u transpose u transpose will be u v and w and t will be t x t y t z transpose fine right? so this are the different types of forces which causes the or which does the work on the up on the on the on the body on the body and because of that we get different kinds of work potential now to summarize to summarize the work potential work potential on in the on the body happens because of three types of forces one is body force surface force point force body force acts on the entire body surface forces acts only on the surface or if it happens to be at the boundaries they are called as tractions and then the point forces acts at the point at one point right it can be p1 it can be p2 it can be it can be it can be p3 and so on it will act at only at the point and because of these different types of body forces we come across different types of work potential and these are the expression so for different engineering problems we will use the combination of this work potentials we can use the combinations of this work potential we can use the combinations of this work potential and finally we can write we can write work potential as we can write work potential as we can write work potential as in minus of integral of v u transpose f dv plus integral of u t t ds plus this summation of all these point forces summation of all these point forces multiplied by its corresponding displacement wherein this i goes can go from 1 to number of loads which is applied so this is the work potential this is the work potential this is the work potential which can which can happen on any engineering body and then we know that the a uh, statement from where we will be starting for in in case of rayleigh reid's method is the potential functional is strain energy plus work potential all right so we have seen how to calculate the strain energies of the structure we have seen how to calculate the work potential uh, for different types of loading in a structure and once we be, we able to formulate this statement we can follow these general steps and we can complete any problem in rayleigh reid's method all right these are the steps which will be following now to formulate the potential energy functional we have already seen how to how will be formulating this potential energy function we have seen how to come up with the strain energy expression we have seen how to come up with the work potential and then these steps are almost same assuming a trial displacement function which we were doing in variational method then we were uh, substituting the admissible trial function once this trial function satisfies the boundary condition we call it them as admissible trial displacement function and this function we will 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 substitute in this potential energy functional then we will minimize this potential energy functional we have also seen why do we minimize this potential energy functional we will minimize it with respect to some unknown parameter and then we'll equate it to zero from this from this we will get set of simultaneous equations we'll solve them and we'll find the values of 
unknown parameters will substitute this unknown parameter back in this admissible solution and this will be our final solution all right so let us see one one or two examples using relay reads method using relay reads method 